What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another video. It's another great day here at Rhino USA and at Harry Dog's YouTube channel. So we're up here in Townsend, Tennessee. We're at, at the uh, Bronco Super Celebration. So basically it's the largest Bronco only gathering in the United States. So it should be a lot of fun. We've already set up our vendor booth and there's a lot of cool rigs. And this time you might notice we're not camped out. We actually have a sweet Airbnb as you can see behind me. Um, I'll get a little bit better of a shot of that because it really is a cool A-frame cabin. But the really nice feature about this place is it's right here on the river. So we're gonna go down here in just a minute, do a little bit of fishing. I got a new fishing pole, so I'll show you guys that. Hopefully catch a few fish, but if nothing else, we'll catch a buzz. So uh, you know how we like to roll. Let me spin this camera around. We'll check out some of the scenery here. So there's the river right there. And you can see our Airbnb is like right here. So it's a really nice like A-frame cabin. Got some uh, really nice raw wood logs. And that skylight right there is probably my favorite feature about this whole place. So just a really nice spot. Thankful for Rhino for putting us up here gonna enjoy ourselves cook up a little caesar salad dinner here in a minute so uh we'll check back with you guys get settled in and get some dinner going and uh, we'll see what's going on so thanks again for watching hope you all enjoy the video y'all so as promised here's my new fishing pole this is a go tour moonlight which is a tankara rod for y'all that aren't familiar tankara is basically the japanese equivalent of fly fishing but this one's kind of cool basically you see it's like a harry potter wand kind of before you break it down you pull the cap off and uh, one thing to mention about this it's very important that you keep the tip of the rod lodged in the cap otherwise when you pull it off it might fall down in there and become very hard to get off. There's a bee on my hand right now, but uh, so you'll see there's like this first portion of the rod. It has a basically a string on the top of it and you'll just um, feed this out and it's a telescoping style rod, obviously. So this one I believe is like, I don't know, I'm five seven, so probably about six two, which is exactly what I wanted for smaller streams. This is the smallest one that Go to your offered uh, the moonlight as the name suggests is kind of like their ultralight action rod so i'm very excited to try this out uh, we're going to be using some like black flies i'm not a huge fly fishing expert but basically like a midge i think is what they call them so uh, the way that it'll work we'll tie the uh, line onto here it just ties directly onto the line similar to a cane pole and then you kind of hold it with like a pencil grip so it's very accurate you can get into a lot of like very small holes and uh eddies with this rod so i'm very excited to try it out we're gonna tie a little bit of line on here get a fly on there and then walk down to the river and uh, hopefully catch a fish this evening so we'll see what this has in store for us and um yeah hopefully it's a lot of fun and uh, if nothing else it'll be good to just try it a little bit of a different fishing style oh my goodness look at this relic we just found Check out this puppy. A genuine Paps Blue Ribbon with the pull top. It's so old, it's rusted clean through to the bottom, but look at that. It's a tall boy too. That is just awesome. Some old hillbilly was out here living large, drinking a PBR, catching catfish. All right, y'all, no fish today, but it was still fun being out here. As you can see, just some beautiful scenery fixing to cook up some dinner we got grilled chicken with caesar salad on the menu tonight so we're gonna go up there check it out do a little bit of a uh iga catch and cook so to speak so hopefully you guys enjoy um we'll see what's going on for dinner we'll probably check out then and then get back with you guys tomorrow morning at the event so uh, stay tuned here's our forage for the night a couple of chicken breasts a little miller light and a great view there's the infamous Corey. We didn't get to see him in the last video because he was sick. There he is in all his glory. 
Here's a little tour of the inside of our Airbnb. You can see it's a little charming log cabin style. Sun's just going down, peeking through the skylights. We got a nice loft up there. That's where I'll be sleeping in a stone chimney with a fire pit. And I like all the little lanterns that they've got around here. That's where we'll have our family dinner tonight, but just a really nice rustic log cabin, fully furnished kitchen. So living luxury. There's our spread, a nice delicious Caesar salad with chicken and garlic bread. All right, y'all, it's the morning of day one of the Bronco Super Celebration. We got Corey breaking in some soft shackles. It's a beehive of Bronco activity around here. There's all sorts of classic Broncos. There's this baby blue one behind us from uh, Velocity Restorations. There's um, a bunch of like 88 body styles back there. And then of course a couple of new edge ones. So we're gonna walk around here in a little while, check out some rigs, but first we'll show you the vendor setup. So here's the Rhino booth. We've got our new Easy Up covers, the bright green ones, and the feathers are up. We've got perfect weather today. No wind, which is nice. So definitely looking sharp. Corey did a great job of packing the trailer. And then here's Ray's new body style Bronco. Got the orange super shackles on there. And the Rhino USA spare tire trash bag. And then of course, Old Faithful parked back here, lurking in the shadows. Ray got some new Morimoto headlights, so these look totally bitchin'. It's like Darth Vader looking. There's a piece that goes across the grill that lights up, and there's also some tail lights and other stuff. So, got a few goodies for the F-150 since the last time y'all saw it. Here's probably my favorite Bronco I've seen so far this weekend, the Pony Express. This looks like an old mud racer. You can see it's got some really sweet pinstriping and a cool metallic paint job. Just totally a unique and cool ride. But it reminds me of like the mud racers. You can see it's got some uh, sponsor stickers, Mallory Ignition. So definitely a little bit of a hot rod Bronco. Cool airbrushing on the hood. Just a real slick ride. Here's some more builds from Duffy's Bronco, or Duff's Bronco, Bronco Experts. Not familiar with the brand, but I do think that they have the coolest paint jobs out of any of these guys here. This one, kind of like a Hawaii tropical vibe going. But the metallic paint on these is just so sick. This one's got like uh, Mastercraft racing seats in there. Looks like an auto on coils. I'm sure these were probably leaf sprung originally. But just a great job on the paint. That's what's impressed me the most about these builds so far is their paint quality. This one's cool, American flag. This one's more of an off-road racer setup. Here's a quick look at the inside of this one. It's got a uh, like angle gauge, it's like analog, which is pretty cool. And then the shifter's mounted like on the dash. So this is probably all custom, twin sick Dana 20, I'm guessing. Full cage, definitely a purpose built off-roader. They've got it all twisted up now. Look at the suspension travel on this old girl. What a beast. A lot of nice Broncos out here, but here's two of my favorites. This one's just got a beautiful emerald green paint job on it. And it's also got a 7.3 power stroke in there. Really nicely done rig. And then this one's just a real beaut. They took the top off. It has a white hard top back there. So it's like kind of like the K5 Blazers of the Bronco world, but this enamel paint job is just flawless. Got some really cool leather interior in there as well. It's a really all around nicely built rig. Got the cool decal package on it. Oh, yeah. Off road recovery. 
the Wambulance. Got some sweet mag wheels. Big train horns on the front. I guess that's what that is. And a worn winch, of course. Got a big kahuna here. And some big wheels and tires in the back. I actually used to have these, I'm pretty sure. If those are fuel hostages, which it does look like they are, but mine were black, if you guys remember the Blue Bandit. Uh, speaking of which, that one got totaled. So I have a new truck now, a 90 Cheyenne, that I'm going to be starting a build series on soon. So be looking out for some video on that. We're going to do some paint job and a little bit of mechanical work. Nice Bronco going by here. All right, y'all. Just wrapping up day two back here at the river by the Airbnb. Sun's just starting to set behind me in the valley. Just a beautiful little scene. So all in all, had a great day today. Met a lot of cool people. Saw a lot of cool Broncos. Y'all know I'm a jeep and chevy guy but these broncos are starting to earn a special place in my heart so um mainly because they're painted which a lot of the jeeps nowadays get wrapped and they put these crazy graphics on them but the bronco guys are still using some single stage acrylic enamels and some of them have some pretty nice metallic paint jobs on them so uh just wanted to point out the workmanship uh, as far as the paint body work goes on these older broncos now, I do want to give a special shout out to one fella in particular, Mr. James Duffy, or James Duff, I'm not sure which. He, he owns an outfit called Duff, Duffy's Broncos or Duff Stuff, Duff Tough Broncos, but that fella is just a genuinely nice guy. He's very passionate about his craft. He makes some killer Broncos, and uh, it was just a real pleasure meeting him. Uh, he owns the Pony Express, which he hand painted back 50 years ago and um, just did a frame off restoration 15 years ago so y'all see that in the video but it was just a beautiful rig lots of uh intricate pinstriping airbrushing metallic flake um he is actually saying that that's uh, nine paint jobs that he's done over the years and he just keeps clear coating over it and adding more and more so we'll meet back up with him tomorrow hopefully hear the pony express fire up so uh for now just been hanging out just got back Having a little sweet water, hazy little thing, IPA. These are pretty good. Uh, my buddy Milton, if you're watching this, you'll know all about these guys. We went to Scottles and Bottles last weekend and had quite a few of these guys and uh, generally a good time. So, um, yep, gonna wind her down, make some barbecue pulled pork nachos for dinner. We'll have a couple shots of that as, tra as is tradition and um, wrap it up for there. Get back at it bright and early tomorrow morning. We'll probably do a poker run tomorrow so that'll be something a little bit more exciting maybe if y'all don't like watching all of the uh, rig rundowns so appreciate y'all staying tuned and uh we'll check back with you soon morning y'all day two at the bronco super celebration just getting started we're working on ray's bronco this morning we've got a uh panel we're installing here that's gonna be a storage box which i'll turn the camera around and show you guys so it's a storage box that's uh all made in usa laser cut in north carolina and it takes the place of this factory little vent louver thing and it's kind of just a really cool piece a couple other really beautiful broncos i love this dark berry wine metallic color the paint's just flawless on this ride it's got some cool beehive headlight covers and i think the my favorite part is this nice ford motor some stainless steel headers peeking out back there Wheelwood adjustable proportioning valve. It seems to be a pretty common addition to these old style Broncos. Is a little bit of a brake boost master cylinder. But yeah, definitely the paint's the star of the show here. Color matched interior. Check out the pinstriping on this one. This one did a really nice job with this. Some nice clean lines. Kind of looking like barbed wire. I like that burnt orange color a lot too. Kind of a resto mod. Got some newer style wheels on there. There's another cool Bronco. This one's probably my favorite body style that I've seen. This one's a little bit more tricked out than I'd usually care for. I like that kind of modular drilled roof rack on there. And the, it's just a clean paint job with the black trim. So. These, these are nice, they're a little bit bigger than the Gen 1s from what I've seen.
Okay, doing a little educational seminar. We got our buddies from Tor out here at the Rhino booth. They showed up in the Raptor. It's a twin turbo model of the regular Raptor. It's got the big old fender flares and hood louvers. Twin turbo V6. This will get the job done. She'll scoot. You can tell it's got some uh, different taillights on here, which is a telltale sign of a Raptor and these big fender flares. So it's definitely a nice rig. They got her polished up. They just had her detailed this morning. Let me get a peek under the hood there, see what's going on. I don't even know what I'm looking at. This is way too out of my uh, decade, so to speak. We got a big dog, new Bronco here. He calls it the Jeep Eater. I won't bother to tell him you can't have a Jeep Eater that's on IFS. Pretty nice rig though. Definitely wheels it. All right, y'all, packed up and headed back to Georgia. Got Corey piloting the Rhino Express with his sweet sunglasses on so he doesn't get blinded. Had a good event. As you can see, I got kind of sunburnt now that I'm looking at myself in the camera. But it was a lot of fun. Met a lot of good people. And everyone was super friendly. The East Tennessee girls were fine. The weather was fine. So all in all, great time. So hope you guys enjoyed checking out some Broncos with me. And we appreciate you watching. We'll catch you on the next video.